This is a 2019 Mini Cooper Countryman John Cooper Works All Four, which is a tremendously long way of saying that this is Mini's SUV and it's the highest performance version of it. Now, some Mini people don't like this vehicle because they've taken a Mini and SUV-ified it. But I've always kind of liked this car, and today I'm going to explain why. I've borrowed this Countryman from Crevier Mini here in Southern California in Orange County, and obviously they have all of the latest Mini models. This is a place where you can find car enthusiast cars with fun driving experiences and manual transmissions, and you don't have to spend a fortune like you would at a Porsche dealer or McLaren or Lamborghini. And that enjoyable driving experience includes the Countryman. Let me give you a basic overview of this vehicle. This is Mini's SUV, and it also is really a Mini SUV. The Countryman is only 170 inches long, which means it's about a foot shorter than a Honda CRV. You can get the Countryman in three versions. There's a base model with 134 horsepower, there's an S version with 189 horsepower, and then there's this, the high performance model, the John Cooper Works version with 228 horsepower. Now, 228 horses may not seem like a lot, but it's quite a big number in a vehicle this size. The John Cooper Works Countryman will do 0 to 60 in 6 6.2 seconds, which is quicker than basically any other crossover. And its small size also makes it nimble and fun to drive. And here's the kicker, you can still get one of these with a manual transmission. It's like the car enthusiast special. You can't say that about most other crossovers. Obviously, the big drawback is the price. The John Cooper Works version starts around $38,000. This one has been equipped to around $48,000, which is a big number any way you look at it. But then this is a cool car and today I'm going to show that to you. First I'm going to take you on a tour of the Countryman and I'm going to show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Countryman click the link below to visit autotrader.com oversteer where I've also rounded up a list of some rare used manual transmission SUVs currently listed for sale on Autotrader. All right, now I want to start the quirks and features of the Countryman with my very favorite quirk of this car, and one of my very favorite quirks in the entire car industry, and that would be the big circle. If you look in the center of this car, in the center control stake, you don't have a bunch of boring rectangles, but you have one giant circle, and then you have the infotainment screen in the middle of that, and the various buttons arranged within the big mini circle. But the circle isn't the best part. The best part is this light strip that goes around the top three quarters of the circle. Not because it provides ambient lighting, but because it communicates with you about various different automotive functions. All right, check this out. You see the light strip in the circle. You go to turn up the stereo volume and watch as the light strip suddenly turns into a stereo volume control. So as you turn it up, the lights go up to show you that you're increasing your stereo volume. That is a pretty cool little quirk. But it doesn't end there. In fact, it doesn't even come close to ending there. You're backing up and you're nearing an object. The giant circle in the middle goes from green to yellow to red to let you know how close you are. So basically, it's an extra parking reverse sensor thing you can look to the big circle to see if you're about to hit something when you're parking, and it does more than that. You want to change the climate control temperature, you use these little dials in the center control stack, but they're small, hard to see. Fortunately, as you twist them, the circle also displays the climate control temperature. It's blue on one side, red on the other, and then your current temperature is this little white mark that moves through the giant circle, letting you know approximately how warm you've changed the climate control to in the car. I love that. And it works the same with climate control fan speed. You can twist that dial and look at the dial and see where the fan speed is, or you can look at the big circle and it will show you exactly how far you've twisted it and where your fan speed is currently set. Another function of the giant light circle, it lets you know what drive mode you're in. If you're in green, the circle is green. You move it to mid, which is like comfort, and then it's orange, you move it into sport, and it turns red because then it's sporty and performancey, and it needs to be red to show that. And the circle again communicating another car function with you. Now, 
if the circle is not in use for one of these functions, it is being used as ambient lighting, and you can change the color of it very easily. There's a little switch on the ceiling next to the rear view mirror. You just press the switch and you can watch the circle cycle through different colors, and then just basically stop when you've reached the color that you want. That changes the ambient lighting for the entire interior, but obviously it's the circle that's most obvious. And then when you're driving down the road, the circle retains that ambient lighting color until you pull up one of those functions like fan speed and then it goes into its more functional state. It is a very cool funky little quirky display that they definitely didn't have to do but it just makes it more interesting and more fun when you're driving this car. And this car is all about quirky little fun details. A moment ago you probably saw the toggle switch when I was changing the color of the ambient lighting in the giant circle. This car is full of toggle switches instead of boring buttons. You can see down here in the middle in the center control stack, you have toggle switches that change the drive mode, traction control, auto start stop, and you even have a toggle switch for the start stop button for the engine, for the vehicle itself, rather than a boring old traditional button. In the ceiling, once again, toggle switches. I already showed you the ambient lighting color one, but the map lights are also toggle switches, and there's even a bigger toggle switch for the sunroof. You just push it back, and then the sunroof automatically opens right up. Very cool. Other interesting quirks in the Mini, we move on to the speedometer. Now, the speedometer in this car goes up to 160 miles an hour. I'm not sure if it actually goes that fast, but what I do know is that above 120 miles an hour, instead of putting red there, like, don't go this fast, they've put a checkered flag there. <laughs> it's almost like encouraging you to go to the really illegal speeds and get into that checkered flag territory in your speedometer. I love that that's printed on there. Next up, another interesting quirk in this interior is the interior door handles. Now, if you look at the door panel, you can see the interior door handles are in this circle thing, but the door handle itself isn't the entire circle. Instead, it's just the rear half, which is like a little D or C shape. That in itself is interesting enough, but but making it even more unusual is the fact that integrated into the part that opens is the lock and unlock button. So they've been able to include basically all door opening, locking, unlocking things in just this tiny little half circle, an unusual quirk. And next up, another interesting quirk in this car. If you look inside the center console storage areas, you can see that they are finished in plaid. There is one sort of at the back of the center console, and then there's one in front of the cup holders, and the bottom part of them is plaid to just make putting stuff in your center console storage areas a little bit more interesting and funky than in a regular car. And speaking of more interesting and funky than in a normal car, a couple of other things I noticed. One is the fact that the automatic transmission gear shift lever, the little button to move it between gears is bright red. I guess signifying that you're doing something important and sporty by putting the car in gear. Also, I like the little microphones for Bluetooth. In most cars, they're built into the ceiling, just a couple of lines, you talk, and the microphones pick you up. In this car, same thing, built into the ceiling, but instead of just boring little lines, they've made the microphone openings the shape of a microphone, which is a fun little quirk, and then you know where the Bluetooth microphone is, so if you want to yell at someone, you can just... Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, moving on to the center console, open this up, and there is a little phone storage spot. I figured it was just somewhere you could put your phone while you're driving to kind of keep it from flying around, but it's better than that. It's actually a little wireless charger. You can put your phone in there and charge it, and you have it hooked up to Bluetooth, and it's playing music, and it's all a pretty good idea. Now, I will say, I've covered a lot of interesting quirks and cool features that this car has so far, but one thing it doesn't have power seats. This car has a window sticker of almost $48,000 and it has manual seats, driver and passenger. You still gotta pull a lever and throw your weight in order to put the seat where you want. That's unheard of in a car at this price point. Now, next up, I wanna move on to the infotainment system. And most of the features in this infotainment system are shared with various other BMW models. So I'll link a few BMW reviews in the description below if you want a more thorough look at this infotainment system. Today, I wanna to talk about some of the unique Mini-specific traits, like for example, the Mini Country 
timer. And I wasn't exactly sure what this is, so I looked it up, and it turns out the car will monitor if you're starting to drive off-road, if it thinks you're on some off-road thing because it feels the suspension and the body moving in that direction, and then it will start timing how much you're driving off-road, and eventually if you drive off-road enough, it will call you a cliff champion, and it will put a stored record inside the infotainment system recording how much time you've spent as a cliff champion, and then in the future, you can try to beat that with an even longer stretch of off-road driving. If you don't do any off-roading, you're labeled as simply a street cruiser, but you could attain cliff champion status if you off-road your countrymen enough. Next, another interesting quirk of the infotainment system. You can go to a tab in the infotainment system that allows you to check the current status of the vehicle, which isn't all that unusual. What's unusual is the way that Mini displays it. Check this out. It shows the range, and it says range okay with a flag, and then it shows the temperature, and temperature okay with a rocket ship. Then it shows the exterior temperature, and it shows the car wearing sunglasses to let you know if it's too hot or cold outside for the car to operate. And then it shows, I guess, the current status of sport mode with this little sport on graphic. And then finally it says, be mini. And then the mini goes on to a little road and drives off. So it's a little bit different from your standard vehicle check. Be mini. Whatever that means. Next, another feature in the infotainment system, you go into technology in action, and you can click on something called minimalism, and that shows how the vehicle is currently operating. Basically, is the engine providing power to the wheels? Which wheels? How are they turning? Where are you going? And basically, it shows you a general status update of the car as it drives down the road. Just they've given it a cute name, minimalism. Next up, another feature in the infotainment system. If you don't like that the giant circle changes colors when you do various things in the car, you can go into the infotainment system and turn that off. You can configure it. So if you don't want the giant circle to display the current climate control temperature when you're changing the climate controls or the stereo volume or your park assist or blah, 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 you can turn all that stuff off if you just find it distracting. But I would judge you because I think all of that stuff is really, really cool. Now, one other item worth noting with the infotainment system, even though this is the modern BMW infotainment system and it functions and works very well, it's a tremendously small infotainment system screen. Mini had to fit it within the giant circle, and it turns out when you're trying to fit a touchscreen in there, that circle isn't really all that giant. And so a lot of the screens are small. Trying to touch different menu items can be a bit of a challenge because the screen is so small. Even seeing it in certain circumstances, it's just not as big as all of the large touch screens that automakers are now integrating into so many of their cars. Nowhere is this more apparent than when the backup camera is on. You shift the car into reverse, the backup camera shows up. It's just really, really small for a car at this price point. It's a very high quality camera, but you just can't see it all that well due to the small size of this screen. Now, next we move on to the back seat of the Countryman, which actually is not excessively small. This is the largest Mini, and so I'm sitting back here. The front seat has moved up somewhat, but I have enough headroom, I have enough legroom. It's actually reasonably large back here, especially considering that this is a fairly small vehicle. I'm surprised how much rear seat space is in this vehicle. Next up, one thing that strikes me while I'm sitting in the back seat is just how nice the materials are. Now, this is a very expensive vehicle given its size and its market position, but it backs that up with a very high quality interior. You have Alcantara all over all of the seats. You have stitching everywhere, the steering wheel. Everything feels nice, looks good. All the toggle switches feel good to toggle. There's a lot of BMW parts, switch gear materials in this interior, and it really does show. This car has a nice interior, very, very high quality. A couple of interesting interior highlights, in fact. This car has Alcantara and stitching on the door panel armrests, both front and back. That's something you won't even see on a lot of BMW models. A lot of time it's just plastic, sometimes it's nice leather. This car takes it up a notch even from there. And it has Alcantara in the rear seat headrest. They could have completely skip that, no one would have cared or noticed, but they did it anyway, and it gives the car just that much more of an upscale look and helps to justify that price. Although, frankly, I would have rather had power front seats, but maybe that's just me. 
And next up, moving under the hood in the Countryman, you can see the engine under here. Nothing particularly noteworthy. Although one interesting item about this car, the base model of the Countryman uses a turbocharged three-cylinder engine, which is a surprise. Not too many three-cylinders on the market today. It makes about 135 horsepower, but the John Cooper Works high-performance version has a turbocharged four-cylinder, which this is, like I mentioned, 228 horsepower, which is a fairly healthy number given this vehicle's size. Maybe the most interesting thing you'll see up here is the fact that when the hood comes up, the headlights don't. That's because by federal regulation here in the United States, the headlights and taillights must stay fixed. And even though headlights come up in some minis in some markets, and I think maybe even the first US minis did that, they don't anymore. Instead, they have a little cutout in the hood. The entire hood area around the headlight goes up. So there's basically these big circles in the hood when it's up, but the headlight itself has to stay fixed in order to comply with government regulations. And next up, I wanna discuss some general exterior items with this car. And I wanna start with the overall styling. I know mini purists don't like this car because it's a larger, bigger mini and they've made an SUV out of it and they've ruined it all. But to me, I think they've done a really good job of turning the Mini into an SUV. And I think it looks really cool. It has the same sort of funky, distinctive look that the standard Mini does, just a little taller, a little wider, a little bit more space. I think they did that really, really well. And they could have totally screwed it up, and they didn't. Now, regarding the specific colors for this vehicle, this is Rebel Green with a chilly red roof, or as I call it, the Christmas Mini. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure I would go with green and red myself, but it does give you an idea of some of the personalization and customization you can do with roofs and mirror caps and body colors on one of these. Next up, moving around to the back of the Countryman, a couple of interesting things back here. One is this rear wiper. Look at this tiny little rear wiper, just so little and small. Basically, I can fit my entire hand across it from end to end. It's such a cute little wiper for a tiny, narrow little back window. In terms of of the actual cargo area. The tailgate is powered, opens up, and the cargo area is fairly normal. Nothing particularly interesting, and actually more space than you might think given the size of this vehicle, although it isn't huge back here. Now, one interesting item with the tailgate is the fact that Mini has gone to great lengths to put little Minis on a lot of the buttons. You can see the recirculating air button has a Mini on it instead of a generic car. Same thing with the hood opener, a Mini instead of a generic car, but the button to put down the tailgate just has a generic vehicle on it. They've borrowed this from BMW, I'm sure, and they didn't bother going to the trouble of making it a Mini-specific button. And so those are the quirks and features of the Mini Cooper Countryman John Cooper Works all four. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Countryman. Now, I actually think this vehicle is one of the, the biggest disconnects between my opinion of it and sort of the, the general opinion. A lot of people, especially many people, don't like, oh, it's too big, it's the big Mini. Why does Mini need an SUV? But I've always looked at it from the opposite perspective. It's like a Mini SUV. It's like you could have a boring CRV or something, but then there's this. It's it's cooler looking, it's more fun, it's more exciting. And, and I think if you come at it from that perspective, as a smaller, cuter, you know, tighter, sportier version of a regular SUV, as opposed to a bigger, bloated, four-door version of a Mini, you have a, a better feeling about this car. I also have always just loved the interior of this thing. I think it has some of the coolest touches and features, and the display screen, the circle, and all the lights, I just think is so... I'm a sucker for all these, these gimmicks that are interesting, because I spend a lot of time in a lot of cars, and you get into Nissan Rogue, and it's just boring. I mean, it's the same stuff you have in any other car. But this thing, they've thought about it, making this car more distinctive, and I think that stuff is really, really special. The fact that you can still get one with three pedals, I mean, it, it, it still has the sort of brand philosophy uh, that, that Mini has always cultivated since it, you know, was revived. And I think the one area where I agree with people, and any complaints about the Countryman specifically, it's expensive. It's an expensive car. Um, it's, yeah, it's smaller and zippier and more fun and more exciting than a CRV, but you're paying for all that. And the interior is better and the materials are better and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's all, it's better in every way. But the question is, do you want a smaller vehicle for more money? And that, that's the hard sell. And that's obviously the, the, the tough decision that you have to make if you want to get one of these. I think the performance of this car 
car is just fantastic. Obviously, it's not incredibly fast. It's not really, really crazy zippy or anything like that. But what it is is better than all the other, you know, little SUVs, or at least most of them. Um, it's it's more engaging. It's more fun. I'd love to drive one with a stick and really have fun with it. The Mini DNA is alive and well in this vehicle, and this is undoubtedly the most practical and rational Mini, especially if you're up north. You need a little ground clearance, you know. It's pretty zippy. I just think that this car is a great example of, of you having fun. You know, the designer that fun creating all this weirdness in the interior, all these cool things. The, the style of it is fun. This is a car you, you never are going to get into and be like, oh, I'm bored in my car again. You know, it's, it's, it's sort of the, an, the antidote for the traditional boring little compact crossover. It's just so much zippier, and the steering is so much better. The body roll is so much more control. I mean, you get in any any other compact SUV, and it's just, you know, it's fine for the people who buy it. I mean, being a RAV4, and it's and whatever. But it's not exciting. No car person is ever going to want that. I kind of feel like, to some extent, this is the most, in terms of entry level, you know, lower level, smaller SUVs, this is the most car person you want. Even if you get a base model, don't get that much power, at least it's more engaging, more exciting, and just a little bit more unique and special. And so that's the Mini Cooper Countryman John Cooper Works All Four. Now I get it. It's not a real Mini because it's an SUV. But here's the thing. People are buying SUVs. And frankly, I think Mini has done a pretty good job of taking the regular Mini's quirky features and its fun driving experience and its funky styling and converting it into the Countryman. Prices are high and that is definitely a drawback, but the Countryman is a fun little crossover in a world of boring ones. And now it's time to give this vehicle a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, I like the Countryman's look of big mini without being a bulbous or ugly mini, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 6.2 seconds, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Handling is very sharp for a vehicle in this segment, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Fun factor is good for a little SUV, but only okay overall, it gets a 3 out of 10. Finally, cool factor is decent, as these are neat, sporty little luxury SUVs, and it gets a 4 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 21 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The Countryman has a lot of good stuff, but it's missing some basics like that old school tiny backup camera system and the manual seats, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is normal for the segment, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good, the interior materials are very nice, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality with 49 cubic feet of cargo room, it gets a 7 out of 10. Finally, value, and this is where the car hurts. It's just a lot of money for a small luxury crossover, no matter how sporty, and it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 31 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is is 52 out of 100, and here's where it falls against the few other SUVs I've reviewed in this segment. It's more fun than the Evoque and the XC40, but it doesn't quite beat those rivals in the daily categories where the Countryman is a bit low on features and a bit pricey. Still, I think the Countryman is a cool SUV and a nice adaptation of the Mini for people who just want more practicality. <laughs>